The actual uh, presentation is uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Uh, it's just a view that I had a, a, a crazy idea uh, about this. And now you should see it fully. Uh, so uh, I was presented, I don't need more presentation. And the whole uh, idea is that as uh, Aya pointed out, I've been around for ages. Uh, I was once young, uh, and it's part of the of the <laughs> of the whole story today. Um, so EMVNet was created 1988 and started producing teaching materials since then. There are materials all over in many servers that came out and disappeared and others that are coming today and all the time as things have been changing. So when I started uh, as a teacher in bioinformatics, and this was in the uh, EMBnet Sweden uh, at the end of the 90s, uh, when I went to different places to teach, uh, most people uh, did not said, did not say, uh, I'm going to a course in bioinformatics. They just said, I'm going to a course in GCG because GCG, the Wisconsin package was synonymous with bioinformatics. So that was the, the way, this was very expensive package. Most universities did not have, could, could not afford this. Um, nevertheless, it was the, the most well-established package. For that reason, the EMBnet together with the other uh, actors, they um, created what it was called, and it's called the EMBOSS package that it contains most of the tools that were in this previous uh, commercial package, but made them uh, open source and free distributable. And this started in some way, the philosophy that today most uh, bioinformatics packages and education are uh, centered around. So this is, is politics and should never be forgotten. Uh, Things are related to how willing we are to share our knowledge and to share our resources with each other. When we do that, we can do marvelous things. Um, the EMBOSS package was one of the tools we were teaching, but we also had a lot of teaching in SRS package. This was a, a system that allowed for beautiful uh, advance, I would say work, uh, work that today many people are not uh, aware of that they can do. And uh, it, it was possible to search for, let's say all the new sequences that are related to a certain disease in a certain uh, organism that also have uh, uh, not only the gene, but the protein. And maybe you could even select the, only the ones that do have a three dimensional structure in the PDB database. So this was very nice, but today, uh, most people and the young people have no idea about the existence of this and they are reinventing the wheel. I can see in many uh, uh, articles that are sent to journals that some people created similar things. Nevertheless, we have today Biomart that can do partly of this, not even close to what SRS was doing, but it was nice. And this, this was the kind of, I would say, teaching that we did in the 90s and in the beginning of the 2000. Uh, in 2000, uh, we got the, the, the first big genomes. Uh, those were expensive things, uh, it cost a fortune to, to, to do one. Um, and uh, even if you did a bacteria genome that will end in the front of uh, nature or science. Uh, and for that reason, we organized a lot of teaching and some of the teachings were organized by projects that were financed by EMBnet, but many other organizations and initiatives. I'm just talking about the things I was involved in because then I can relate to that. And I have pictures, <laughs> otherwise I cannot show them. So this was a regulatory sequence discovery workshop organized in Uppsala by the EMBnet. And why I'm showing this is because to tell that for the young people today that even the teachers were young ones. And uh, to this workshop attended certain people that are present today. So you can see here when uh, this is 2004, it's on almost 20 years ago. 
uh, and we can see some of the participants of this meeting when there were also uh, students there participating, even though they were expert and very knowledgeable people, but you could have the old pictures. And here you have some more of them. I have even more, but we have no time to go through these things. Um, this is interesting. Uh, I have pic uh, pictures where you see uh, la creme de la creme in bioinformatics in, in Europe, just in, in one little room, because most people, there were no more than that. And the amounts of people being uh, involved in teaching were not that many. Uh, what happened then in the middle of, of the year 2000, is that we got the next generation sequencing that nowadays young students don't say next generation sequencing because the generations are several. So it's high throughput sequencing. And this changed the way that we work in the way that most people in life science work. And that also changed all the contents and all the type of, uh, of teaching that we, we were doing. And not only because we wanted, but because it was needed as people had no limits of what they wanted to do. And nowadays you need to have many thousands of genomes to get the front page of, of nature or science. That means that you need really to do a, a huge work, even though the work is advanced and it's a lot of work, it doesn't count very much because everyone can do this. So uh, as an example, the Earth Biogenome Project, uh, the aim is to sequence uh, several million genomes in all over. And this is very important in a way because we are destroying the planet in, in much faster uh, speed than we are reading genomes. Uh, all these curves that we show about how cheap and fast things are going in our area, they should always be construct, con, uh, constructed it, with uh, the destruction we are doing. Uh, more species disappear in the planet every month that we would like to this to happen. Um, this new NGS uh, uh, technologies and all these wonderful things, they made uh, most of us to be engaged in many courses. That picture that I was showing, just show one of them that when we, together with the ISCB, we organized uh, a course in Barcelona when the NGS uh, initiative, many of you have been involved. It was a NGS cost action that uh, initiated many, many courses and training and created a lot of uh, resources also that later on were shared. The only problem is that everything you create in NGS after two, three years is absolutely obsolete because all the software is upgraded. So this is a, a, a big uh, uh, race. Uh, nevertheless, uh, and of course, please don't criticize me for being so incredible egocentric, but I only found these pictures the, during the weekend. Um, uh, I would like to have pictures for many more uh, and I will put them in my next coming presentations, but this is just showing that there was a, a big demand in, in learning about all these new technologies all over the planet. So the pictures are showing you the Antarctic Research Institute, the Colombo University uh, Research Institute, uh, uh, several uh, workshops in Africa, etc., etc. And they deal from plant biology, animal sciences to medical sciences. Um, what happened then? We were all super active and we were organizing all these courses and uh, many projects even got funding and then suddenly we could not, use, not even use the money anymore because we were not supposed to travel and we were not supposed to organize, uh, I would say, face-to-face -face, uh, courses. So when COVID came, uh, we all moved to Zoom as we are doing today. And this changed the way that we work in, in which way, well, we have to adapt and create online courses. What is interesting here, and I had to mention this, is that the EMBnet already in 2002 were, was organizing all the meetings of the network with a, a system, video, video system called Maratech. People uh, is, uh, is kind of cyclic. 
we do things, people forget that, and then we are back to the same, and then people don't even remember that some other people were doing this. Uh, this is interesting because not only we had our regular meetings using this, but we also organized uh, courses. So we had, a, as an example, uh, a course in Bogota in Colombia, well, the students were sitting in a classroom, but the teachers, some of the teachers were sitting in Switzerland and some in other countries, and this was not a big problem. And it, this is all is almost 20 years ago. So it's all the time the same. History repeats itself. And why I'm talking about history, you will see in a moment. So when COVID, uh, got into our nerves uh, as you all know i'm really i i've been in in stockholm twice now almost two years uh, i've not been outside sweden for two years and and i seldom go out because in sweden there is no restrictions and people are running around like it was no pandemics and i'm a little uh, uh, scared of of getting it uh, so things are, are are getting in that way so Vaccines are helping. Everyone uh, put their um, trust in this. And there are several of them. They use different technologies. Most of these technologies are due only to the knowledge that we have in molecular biology and very much in bioinformatics. You all know that everyone nowadays talk about terminology that we only used before in bioinformatics or very advanced molecular biology, but the journalists are doing it, people in the homes are doing it. It's just incredible how fast this has gone. The only problem with these new um, vaccines is that the efficiency is not very high. So some of them are not that efficient even after six months or a year of uh, administrating this. So there, there is need for improvement. And that is what I wanted to mention today as an example. There is one uh, new vaccine that is coming called Novavax that is very promising in many ways. It's efficient. It takes uh, it will give, give a protection for a longer time, but it's also much, much cheaper than all the others. So the developing world will benefit from this. And they, their goal is to produce billions of these uh, of these vaccines. This vaccine is not only for COVID, but it has also been uh, being developed uh, a variant of it, the same company, to Ebola and other uh, of these uh, zoonotic diseases, which is something that will affect uh, humanity more and more. Now that we are almost 9,000 million people that are just putting away all living organisms in very small uh, reserves. Uh, what is interesting with this is that why this vaccine works and works differently is because the vaccine is using uh, synthetically produced spike proteins uh, to, to be administered, not just RNA that will produce or not produce high or low amounts when it's uh, transfected into the muscle cells by the injection, but this uh, contains an adjuvant, adjuvant that helps to boost the immune system to produce uh, antibodies related to uh, COVID. And these adjuvants that are the most interesting here is based on uh, saponin. And saponin, uh, there are many, many plants have this, but many of them are toxic to humans. So you cannot use all the saponins, but it was found that uh, a tree and the tree bark of a tree in Chile a, a tree that has been used by thousands of years by the Mapuche Indians there to wash their hair and as a medical plant uh, contained the, the best saponins that could, they could find. Uh, why is this so interesting for us and why I'm talking about this? Not only that this was found, but very much because it's ancestral knowledge. This, this knowledge is based on the knowledge that the Indians had, and they were ignored for many years because uh, the, the society in Chile is very racist and they ignore everything that's coming from their, uh, I would say, indigenous populations. Um, what is interesting here is that this tree that they use the bark to isolate the saponins, is, you can isolate very, very small amounts of, uh, of, of this uh, ingredient from these trees. And 
the company is planning to produce billions of, of uh, dose, doses for, for people. So the production started, it's very promising, but what happened? Well, So the problem is that there are not so many trees left that uh, are indigenous and uh, uh, the, the ones that are endemic because the big companies in the world have been cutting down all these forests and planting eucalyptus and pines because it's more productive. And this is what we are doing all over the planet. This is an, as an example, I think it's an excellent example to show that we, in the bioinformatics community, we need to teach people, we need to train people to understand why this is so important, not only for academic, but for humanity and survival. And we need to learn from the old to teach the young, and we need to keep this in, in a way that uh, is understandable because it's the only way of surviving today. Uh, this, to me, is that without knowledge of the ecosystems and the diversity that the planet have, that will make us to lose the cure for many future diseases. Nature can provide us with many of the cures that we will need in the future when more and more zoonotic diseases will, uh, uh, I would say, treat uh, humanity. And we have to make this uh, a priority and we need to teach and we need to talk about this. Uh, I will end with this because this is what I wanted to present to you and why it, it was about this, um, uh, the, the electric uh, chip is coming from a book uh, and that book ended in a movie called Blade Runner. Uh, and I think that a lot of bioinformaticians like uh, science fiction and the ending scene of this is that people do not listen to the people with experience and the knowledge is gone. Uh, and this is something that we teachers need to take care of. I watched sea beams glitter in the darkness for 10 hours a day. All those moments will be lost in time. Like <laughs> tears. So why I'm talking about these things? Uh, very much because I've been touched by uh, some of our uh, former node managers that have uh, passed away because of COVID and friends that have passed away. And also because <laughs> last week I got a letter that I'm close to my retirement and I should uh, uh, send a letter if I want to work for more two years or retire next year. So these things make you think a lot about what you have done and what uh, is the future and what is to be done. And I think that what we are doing with uh, Goblet and Ian Binet and all our friends uh, teaching and uh, sharing our knowledge that is the result of years of practice is so incredibly important. 
uh, that was it. And uh, I hope that <laughs> it was not uh, a loss of time for you. Thank you.